after we discuss mathematics and nature, we are now to move to the next chapter and we'll be discussing mathematical language and symbols. Now, let's move first to mathematical language. Now, mathematical language has developed and provides a highly efficient and powerful tool for mathematical expression, exploration, reconstruction after exploration, and communication. Now, its powers comes from simultaneously being precise and yet concise. So, we can say that the mathematical language and logical reasoning using that language form the everyday working experience of mathematics. Mathematical language can easily be understood by context and convention. When we say context, we are working or... The part or the particular topic being studied, that's the context, while convention is where mathematicians and scientists have decided that this particular symbol will have particular meaning. Mathematical language is also the system used to communicate mathematical ideas. So to fully understood mathematical language, Let's, let us check into the characteristics of mathematical language. So we have three under this. We have precise, in which it's a culture of being correct all the time. So this was, um, the mathematical culture of precision has developed a precise, highly symbolic language that allows um, for the adaptation, adjustment, and cumulative refinement of the concepts that are based on experiences and mathematical reasoning will be expected to be correct. So when we talk about uh, when we talk about precision, precise, that goes with accuracy. That's the reason whenever we have um, solving or anything way back as we started learning as we started learning mathematics in the lower years accuracy is always there since precision or being precise is a character uh, one of the characteristics of mathematical language next is concise concise shows simplicity so this is a strong part of the culture of mathematic um mathematical language um aside from concise we have the third one it's powerful so how powerful what how come that we have said that this powerful word is also a character of mathematical language we have said being powerful or the characteristic of being powerful for of mathematical language uh, we included that because we can express complex thoughts with relative ease. Okay. And apart from it, we have to remember, as what Galileo Galilei have said, that mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. Now, you might think of how come that Galilei was able to um, set this Mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. So maybe you can check into the relationship of uh, the relationship of mathematics and nature, and from there on, let's think of in what ways can be mathematics is the language of God, in which a universe has written. Okay, so we move on. Okay, now as part of learning mathematical language and symbols. We have to know these two things, expression versus sentences. Now, when we say expression, it's a finite combination of symbols that is well-defined according to rules that depend on the context. So, the symbols here can be numbers, variables, operations, functions, um, punctuations, brackets, or groupings. So we are using that to determine the order of operation and other aspects of mathematical syntax. So what else can we say about expression? It's a correct arrangement of mathematical symbols that is used to, um, to represent the object of interest. So 
used to represent the object of interest. And it does not contain a complete thought. And it cannot be determined if it is true or, or false. Um, how can we say so? Since um, it do represent the object of interest, so it can, it can um, just tell us um, a certain thing that we are we don't know if it is already a complete thought or not so if uh, expression uh, it does not contain a complete thought and it cannot be determined if it is true or false right away now let's move on to sentences now sentences makes a statement about expression it can be using numbers variables or combination of both What else can we say? It states a complete uh, thought. So you can see the difference between the two expressions and sentences. All right? And at the same time, a mathematical sentence can be determined whether it's true, false, or sometimes true, sometimes false. So you can see now the difference between expressions and sentences. So let's move on to conventions in the mathematical language. Now, mathematical language have conventions, and these conventions will help uh, individuals like us to, to for us to distinguish between the different types of mathematical expressions. So, mathematical convention is a fact, name, notation, uh, which is generally agreed upon by mathematicians. Sorry, I forgot to rotate my. Okay. So, what could be an example of that? An example would be the use of PEMDAS. So when one evaluates that multiplication before um, division, so we can add um, this principle of PEMDAS. So mathematicians, remember, they do abide by conventions to be able to understand that they write without constantly having to redefine the basic terms. So almost all mathematical num uh, names and symbols are conventional. So just like the principle of uh, PEMDAS, when one evaluates multiplication before division. What else? Mathematics has its own technical terms. So what are um, examples of technical terms? Uh, we can say group. So for mathematics, the definition of group is different from that of the other um, subject when we say ring when you can when you are to um to call this when you have heard of ring r-i-n-g you might think of the jewelry that we are wearing on our finger um uh, yeah on our fingers but for mathematics ring can be a parenthesis okay field so it's a different field field okay and uh Factor. Factor can be defined as, let's say, 2 and 3 are factors of 6. But in the other fields, factor can be something that is present or uh, something that you are to put into to examine um, a certain thing. So, mathematics has its own brand of technical terms. So, you have to remember that. Okay? Aside from that, mathematics has its own taxonomy. So, what's an example of this? An example would be the theorems, the postulates, um, axioms. So, those are the um, own taxonomy of mathematics. And of course, uh, mathematics has its own vocabulary and has its uh, visual um, elements. So, when we talk about visual, we can move on to the spoken mathematical language. So it can be in written, spoken mathematical, mathematical language, rather it can be in written or printed, mathematical discourse, mathematical expressions. So it will contain this symbolic verb. So what are the symbolic verb that we have said? So we can we have equal, you can see the symbol. You have less than, what else? Okay, greater than, addition, subtraction. Uh, multiplication, division, 
element approximately therefore union and, and where is intersection where's union yeah there so those are some of the um, too many to mention spoken mathematical language oh there's another one there exists so those are the first three uh, lessons under this chapter characteristics of mathematical language expression versus sentences and the conventions in mathematical language now what's uh, the fourth lesson the fourth lesson will be about the basic concepts in mathematics structures and i know you're very much familiar with this and i know you you were able to encounter some of this in your um, high school mathematics or basic education mathematics so what's inside the basic concepts in mathematics structures first is the language of sets so there goes a finite unit set empty set universal set cardinal numbers and i hope you can recall that next is the language of functions and relations so there goes your gen math you have the relation corresponds depends on so those are the terms domain function value of mapping so those are the terms that we will encounter when we say language of functions and relation and then the language of binary uh, operations so we have here closure property uh, associative then the negative integers and what else group Mm, inverse property and so on. So, uh, the basic concepts in mathematics structures will be discussed in the next uh, video that I'll be uploading or our next um, live discussion. So, for the meantime, I hope that you were able to um, have a glimpse of or you were able to learn the different things that you need to remember when we talk about mathematics language so do remember the characteristics do remember when can we say it's a, um, expressions versus sentences the differences between the two and also the conventions in mathematical language so that's for the first three lesson and thank you very much